vibrant community with over 150 active members. Here's our Secular Humanist of the Low Country t-shirt. And the back of our shirt has my favorite pun. <laughs> What's it say? Oh, ha, I get it. I also learned about several national atheist and humanist organizations, and I joined them all because they were involved with issues I supported. But each was doing its own thing and ignoring other like-minded organizations. I wanted to show our strength in numbers and cooperate on issues that affect all secular Americans. So in 2002, I helped form the Secular Coalition for America, whose mission is to increase the visibility of and respect for non-theistic viewpoints and to protect and strengthen the secular character of our government. Now, we formed as a political advocacy group to allow unlimited lobbying on behalf of secular Americans, finally giving atheists a voice in our nation's capital. We went from all volunteers to a dedicated staff of eight, not quite what the religious right has, but a reasonable start. We now have 19 national member organizations and we hope to expand to 50 active state secular coalitions. The Secular Coalition recently partnered with the United Coalition of Reason, which encourages cooperation of non-theistic communities in all of our states. The Secular Coalition can certainly use help from committed activists like many of you, so please sign up for our action alerts and consider supporting the Secular Coalition, whose uh, website is secular.org. As president of the Secular Coalition, I was invited to participate in a debate at Oxford University in England. We were told to wear tuxedos, which I rented and wore for the one and only time in my life. The debate topic was, does American religion undermine American values? I began. You just heard Richard Lowry, editor of National Review, complain about how difficult it is to be a conservative in New York City. Now, I'll tell you what it's like to be an atheist in South Carolina. And I relayed some of my stories and closed with in this melting pot called America, we are one nation under the Constitution, or maybe under Canada. <laughs> but we are not one nation under God. Given how the religious right opposes the teaching of evolution, or any scientific or social view that conflicts with the literal interpretation of the Bible, we are really becoming one nation undereducated. <laughs> Our side won. I also enjoy debates with ministers, which is often the first opportunity for Christians to hear an atheist point of view from an atheist rather than from their minister. One such debate was on, can we be moral without God? There were over 800 in the audience, mostly from the minister's megachurch. During the debate, we got to question each other. My favorite question of the minister was, how would you behave differently if you stopped believing in God? The minister thought for a minute and said, sometimes I'm tempted by other women, but I don't act on that temptation because of my love of Jesus, knowing how much it would hurt Jesus. Well, that gave me an easy response. Sometimes I'm tempted by other women, but don't act because of my love of Sharon, knowing how it would hurt Sharon. I think even the minister's wife preferred my <laughs> Whether to base decisions on the needs of an imaginary God or on real human beings, is the essential difference between conservative religionists and humanists. 
Now, I always look for common ground with related people, even if it's difficult, as in the following case. Now, I know you're thinking, what could I possibly have in common with Jerry Falwell? Well, Jerry Falwell once said, God doesn't hear the prayers of a Jew. I agree with Jerry Falwell. <laughs> of, of course, for very different reasons. 